from NBC News, this is Today with Katie Curry and Matt Lauer, live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza. God, my hips are huge. Oh, please, I hate my cats. These you guys can wear halters. I've got man shoulders. I used to think there was just fat and skinny. Apparently, there's a lot of things that can be wrong on your body. My hairline is so weird. My pores are huge. My nail beds suck. I have really bad breath in the morning. Ew. It was, was Lindsay Lohan are... getting her first real me. taste of high school angst in the hey, hit film Mean me. Girls. While plastic surgery makes for a funny punchline in the no, movie, no, no, the no, subject no, no. is definitely no that. joke for many teens contemplating Damn, going so under the knife. Welcome back to today on this Thursday morning. It is the 14th day of October. I'm Katie Couric inside Studio 1A with a special hour-long report on teens and plastic surgery. According to the American Society of Plastic Surgeons, more than 331,000 cosmetic plastic surgery procedures were performed on people age 18 or younger in 2003, and that's up 48% from the year before. Over the next hour, we're going to meet an 18-year-old who's thinking about having liposuction, and we'll found, find out why her mom is supporting her decision. And we'll hear from two teenagers who've already had plastic surgery and find out how they feel about it today. We'll also meet their parents and get their reaction as well. And finally, we'll talk with two doctors to find out why so many teenagers are turning to plastic surgery and find out if they turn anyone away ever. And we'll examine the psychological implications of all this. So, lots to get to, but before we begin, let's have a check of the latest news from Natalie Morales, who's in for it. We've been spending the last hour talking about the issue of teens and plastic surgery. Some teens, teens shared their experiences with our producers. Let's meet Dara Ryder, who had cosmetic surgery five years ago. I had rhinoplasty on my 14th birthday. It was the summer before my freshman year of high school, and I was starting a new school, so that was a good time. It's always been something that I wanted to do. My, my parents and my brother are very supportive of it. I was born with my dad's nose, which is rather large for a person being 5'1", so when I was small and I had this big nose, it looked awkward. It was too big for my face. In middle school, I got teased a little bit about my nose, and I just looked at myself in the mirror one last time and I ran my finger down my nose and that was it. The nurse told my parents that I fell asleep with a big smile on my face. When I look at myself now, I, 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 I love what I see. I tell people, I'm like, my, my favorite body part is my nose. It's still mine, it's just been reconfigured and, and it, it fits me now. Dara Ryder is here with her parents, Sherry and Arnie Ryder. Good morning. Nice Good to morning. have you guys. Thanks so much. Dara, I know your mom was the first person to suggest maybe you have plastic surgery, rhinoplasty, nose job, whatever. Had you thought about the possibility before your mom suggested it? Um, well, when I was younger, my whole family and I, we, we talked about it because you could, you could see from my pictures and everything, my nose was just too large. So it was a whole family uh, decision and we all talked about it and thought about it so um, I I didn't come up with the idea but I think because my parents were so supportive we all talked about it and what why did you think it was a good idea Sherry well we um, w watched our grow being typical mom and dad uh, we charted the the growth and um, Seeing that Dara was coming into her features, leaving that sort of awkward age and uh, approaching um, being a teenager, um, the nose definitely didn't fit her face. Uh, Dara um, has been a competitive dancer and has been in the public eye for many, many years. And it just seemed fitting that we could do this for her. You know, I know that, that Arnie, at the time, the doctor recommended that Dara have chin augmentation. At some point, did you think there's something unnatural about changing your face to this extent and that we're all given unique faces and we have to learn to kind of embrace them and love them and, and sort of deal with who we are just as you've dealt with your nose through the years? Yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I, at first, I thought the idea of a chin implant seemed a little strange, um, but as I learned from Dr. D'Amico, who's... Um, it did a terrific job, obviously. 
um, there, there's a certain symmetry of the face. And if, and if Dara had her nose changed without the chin matching, I think her face would have looked um, as awkward, you know, if I can use that term, as it did before. So I think it, it created a certain symmetry which really worked for her. Did you worry about uh, messing with the batter before the cookies were even done? I mean, as that girl on that show said, she was just 14, right, when you had it done. Did you wonder about her face changing and, per, you know, perhaps her features changing as well? No, because I think in the process that we, we went through, there was a great sense of trust, uh, not only um, uh, for Sherry for doing all the work and the research, et cetera, but also Dr. D'Amico, um, who really presented it with a great deal of ethics and integrity, and also trust in Dara, who um, really uh, um, had a sense of what she would look like and it would turn out fine. And so, no, I didn't have that concern at all. And, and in retrospect, you're happy that you got this done. Absolutely. I love it. You know, Katie, we did, um, in terms of doing our homework, um, there was um, um, a period of time where we actually watched the growth to see if there would be any further growth, growth, and when there wasn't, we knew that the time would be appropriate. It was age appropriate for Dara, both physically and emotionally. Well, thank you all so much for coming in and talking to us about this because You're it is a You're tough welcome. decision, and obviously it's one that was carefully thought out by you all. Well, we've heard from Dara Ryder, who had rhinoplasty five years ago when she was 14, and Katrina Caro, an 18-year-old who had breast augmentation back in May. Now let's hear from their doctors. Dr. Dr. Richard D'Amico is with the American Society of Plastic Surgeons, and Dr. Alan Gold is a member of the American Society for Aesthetic Plastic Surgery. Dr. D'Amico and Dr. Gold, thanks so much for joining us. Let me Thank start you. with you, if I could, Dr. D'Amico. What typical reasons do you hear from teens in terms of why they want to have plastic surgery? Well, I think the appropriate reasons to have plastic surgery are when the teenager perceives a specific flaw that she would like corrected or perhaps enhanced. Uh, something that's real and visible and, of course, uh, where we can actually make an improvement. Uh, it may be the nose, it may be the breasts. Uh, the body image in teenagers, as you've discussed on the show, is important and we have to be very careful about it so we have a very thorough discussion well how are you careful what kinds of questions do you ask when someone comes into your office and says i want my breasts done well the the consultation process is very very lengthy it involves multiple visits with the patient and their family and we spend a great deal of that time talking about the patient's uh, self-image making sure that they have a baseline of adequate self-esteem and that the surgery is being done to actually correct a physical problem rather than uh, to, to solve emotional difficulties, which is not an appropriate reason to have cosmetic surgery. But isn't that sometimes hard to assess? Um, it, it is not easy to assess, but we spend a great deal of time uh, doing it, and I think we have a fair degree of success. Um, and we work very hard at making those distinctions. I think it's the most important part of the consultation, in the, especially with teenagers. Dr. Gold, have you ever turned somebody away and said, you're doing this for the wrong reasons? Absolutely. I think it's incumbent on us as responsible surgeons, and, and both Dr. D'Amico and I are members of each other's respective societies as well. And I think speak for those board-certified plastic surgeons who take the time and effort to interview patients and, and try to discriminate carefully about those patients that are doing this for an appropriate or inappropriate reason, whether uh, we're always successful, we try as best we can to evaluate them emotionally, but it's not very different for a teenage patient's evaluation than for an adult's patient, an adult patient. Really? But aren't teenagers so different in terms of their, their sort of uh, development, in terms of their self-image and who they see themselves as? Absolutely, and I think that you need to, as illustrated by both of these patients, need to pick those patients who are comfortable with themselves, who are not looking for a quick fix uh, for any life, uh, lifestyle problems, any relationship problems, but who are looking to do something for a, a visible and real, not just a perceived issue, that you can help them with. And I think while it is crucial to evaluate the teenager's self-image and so on, adults deal with self-image problems as well. Uh, if you find a mature patient uh, as a teenager, then they can be as happy with the results of their surgery as any of our adult patients. I've read articles that allude to a growing trend of, of girls getting breast augmentation for high school graduation presents. There's something about that that, that sort of skeeves me. Am I crazy? Uh, no, it should upset you, but it is not true, and I'm glad you brought that up. 
I think that that makes good press. It makes uh, um, good copy, perhaps, for a publicist, for an individual surgeon. But the trends that you mentioned before are, are not exactly quite accurate. Certainly plastic surgery overall has gone up and it has increased in popularity. But only 4% of all elective plastic surgical procedures are done in teens, and that's not a different percentage than it has been for perhaps the last 10 years. So these figures that say it's gone up 48% are... Well, like, yes, they, uh, excuse me, Alan, it has gone up in... in uh, absolute numbers, but actually the percentage of teenagers Oh, I see. Is, but is So it's more teenagers, but it's more the overall population yes. as well. Well, that's still... Yes. Hello? Well, yes, and <laughs> the FDA in 2002 placed the stipulation on breast augmentation that it only be done in those patients over 18. So since that's about the age that they graduate high school, that's not unusual then for them waiting after that time period to have the surgery, and that indicates a trend. And it's also not uncommon to have uh, elective surgical procedures done at at points of change in your lifestyle. Right. High school to college, college to a job, and, and so forth, when and it's reasonable to change those we're, we're almost out of time, but Dr. D'Amico, I know this is your bread and butter, but do you ever worry that society is just placing the wrong emphasis? So much, maybe it's out of kilter, too much emphasis on the package and not enough on the insides. I worry about that all the time, and I think that's why as plastic surgeons we spend so much time trying to do appropriate surgery on appropriately selected patients. And, and actually the media with all of this swan and makeover it actually worries me more than anything. And I would urge patients to have adequate consultations, to seek out board certified plastic surgeons who will take the time to get to know them and operate on the appropriate ones and say no to those to whom we should say no. Well, Dara and Katrina, thank you both so much for coming in and talking about your situations because I know it's personal and not necessarily so easy to share. And Dr. D'Amico and Dr. Gold, our thanks to you as well. Thank we you. appreciate thank it. You. Wonderful. And don't forget to tune in tomorrow for Rod Stewart performing live out on the plaza. We'll see you then.